All right, guys, welcome back to the Hack the Box lab walkthrough video series. Uh, in the last video, we solved the last machine in the tier zero category um, that's free. I'll be separately doing um, some videos on some of the VIP machines, uh, but for now, uh, we completed all the free machines, so we're going to move over to the first tier uh, where some of these machines will get a little bit increasingly difficult. So, um, as you can see, uh, I already started up the machine, once again connected to the VPN, uh, spun up my instance. So uh, if you need a second to get caught up and get to this point where you have your instance ready to go, I'll give you a chance to pause the video here and then we will go on from there. All right, welcome back. So we are going to go into the first task um, and that is what does the acronym SQL stand for? And that is going to be structured query language. So you can see we're probably already looking at something. There's either going to be a SQL service on this machine, probably a SQL injection. Um, yeah, and that's actually task two, what is one of the most common types of SQL vulnerabilities. So that is going to be SQL injection. Um, and I'll go over that a little bit deeper in a second when we get to it. Um, but we'll go over ta to task three. Uh, this is what does PII stand for, and that is personally, personally identifiable, like a type or spell <laughs> information. I will submit that. So then this one, uh, this is task four. This is what does the OWASP top 10 list name the classification for this vulnerability. So what we'll need to do is we'll actually have to uh, go over to OWASP top 10 injection. And I believe we need the identifier. So I believe it's going to be A120, or we need, probably need the 2021 version of it. So let's find this. So we're going to need AO3 2021 injection. Okay, so we had a little bit of copy and paste issue there, um, but we're back. This is AO3 2021 injection. Um, I'll show you. Uh, I just manually typed it in. I'm not sure what the copy and paste problem was there, uh, but that is the correct answer. You want to make sure you're grabbing it um, from the most up to date year. Here, this is the answer. Um, if you are copy and pasting it in, just be wary that there's something weird going on there, but um, that is the answer, and you can find it right on the uh, OWASP website here. So going down to task number five, we're going to get into enumerating the machine a little bit, and that is asking us what service and version are running on port 80 of the target. So let's head over to my machine. And what we'll do, uh, I'll enlar enlarge this for you guys. We're going to need to come and grab the IP address of this machine. And then we're going to run an nmap scan here. So same thing that we have been doing. We're going to do uh, SVSC for ver version enumeration and uh, scripts to run against those versions. Uh, we're going to do dash V for output. Uh, and then we're just going to paste the IP address. Uh, I will be back with you guys once this finishes up, just in case this takes a few minutes. All right, so we're back. This finished. It actually didn't take too long once again, but um, just wanted to make sure. So it looks like the only thing that we have open on this machine is port 80. And we can see that this is going to be just servicing HTTP, and it's running Apache, which is an HTTP server. Um, and that's actually... <laughs> the answer to the question that we were looking for. So we'll go ahead, copy this, come back over, come down, and we'll paste this. And then this is going to ask what, uh, this is task six, what is the standard port used for HTTPS? And that's going to be 443. So those are two important ports to know. Um, they're pretty ubiquitous ubiquitous everywhere. Um, 80 is going to be HTTP, and then 443 is going to be HTTPS, which is the encrypted version of that. 
So we'll come down to task seven. Task seven is going to say, what is one luck-based method of exploiting login pages? Um, this is going to be brute forcing. No, there's not a zero there. <laughs> so uh, brute forcing is kind of just a uh, methodology of just throwing a bunch of guesses at a login page or just uh, trying to guess every possible uh, permutation of like a username or a password um, in hopes that one of them will work. Uh, it hardly ever works. Um, most place it, most uh, login pages nowadays have certain security measures to lock you out, uh, ban you from doing this. So uh, in most cases it won't work. I mean, I believe it probably won't work on this page as well. So we'll move on to task eight. Um, what is a folder called in web application terminology? So folders in web applications are actually called directories. Um, and you'll see this, uh, you actually can, we can kind of refer to this up here. So we have, this is kind of our initial URL. Um, this is like the root point is this app.hackthebox.com. And then starting point um, could be a directory that holds all these machines within it. Um, another thing that you could think of is, you know, this, these are technically folders. Um, so what you'll see on a lot of websites is maybe there's like a forward slash images and then another slash that could be the folder that holds all the images for the website. So now we will move on to task nine. And then it says what response code is given for not found errors. So a not found is uh, when you send a GET request and that uh, resource is not found on the, uh, the host that you're looking for, and that's gonna be a 404. If you're not familiar um, with these error codes, they are super important to know. Uh, I would recommend going over to Hack the Box Academy, which I believe is academy.hack box.com or .eu, um, and that ha they have a whole module, uh, which is basically a course on web requests where you learn the errors, the workings of web requests. It's, it's very good, um, and I think you probably should be familiar with that. So that's the answer to task nine. Um, in task 10, this is going to say, what switch do we use with GoBuster to specify we're looking to discover directories and not subdomains? So that is going to be the dir switch. Um, and that is, uh, it's kind of a functionality of uh, GoBuster. You have to specify what exactly you're looking for. So you'll do like GoBuster, um, and then you just type the word dir. I wouldn't necessarily call it a switch um, like you would with like Edmap, where it's like dash SC, dash SV. Um, those are what I think of as switches. I kind of think of the dir uh, for GoBuster as a mode, um, and that's kind of a better way to think about it, specifically with their syntax, because it is a little bit different than a lot of other command line tools that you use. So then uh, we'll head down into task 11, um, and task 11 is what symbol do we use to comment out parts of the code? Um, and what we can do here is we'll use a hash. So that hashtag sign, or the pound sign, as what you use to comment out parts of the code. And that's to um, that's specifically for SQL. Um, so what we can go back and do over here now, um, what I think it's been leading us to is that this is going to be a SQL injection. Um, it would be random if it wasn't, because <laughs> the, ha the uh, box has a SQL injection tag on it, and it was asking a lot of questions about SQL. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll copy this IP address. Um, from our enumeration, we know that there is a uh, HTTP service running on this host. Um, so what we can do is we can open up our web browser, do HTTP, and then paste the IP address. And this will bring us to what looks like a login page. Um, so one thing that I like to do, just because we need, we're going to need a username and password here, uh, potentially, um, maybe not. We'll see what the SQL injection exactly is. But I'm going to use Control U to inspect the source and see if they give us a username um, anywhere on here. So we're looking for links. Um, we're seeing where these links take us to. What's linked on this page? Um, seeing if we can find anything interesting on the page. I'm not seeing a whole lot. Sometimes you might see like a username and a password 
commented out in here. Um, and it doesn't look like we have a lot in the source code. Um, so what we can do is maybe like assume that there is an admin. I would imagine that there's an admin. Okay, so let's try a couple default usernames first. Um, you never know, the SQL injection might be after we're logged in. So let's try like admin, admin. That doesn't look like it's the case. Maybe administrator um, password doesn't look like it works. Let's just try one more. We'll do root, root. That's a common one. Okay, doesn't look like that's going to work. So what we'll go ahead and do now is we're going to try to do a SQL injection. And we'll try it with like these three usernames because those are typically the most common found um, on these web applications. So let's do admin first. So then we'll add this uh, single quotation um, because what we're assuming is that it's selecting a username and password. So if this is going to select a username, we want to end the name of the user with our own quote here. So we can imagine that there's an open quote string here. Um, we're gonna enter this, close off our quote string with this one at the end of the admin and then we will do pound sign. So pound is how you comment out, and that's what um, that question was uh, asking us, I wanna say in like task 11. Um, so what we're doing here is we're going to inject the username admin, um, we're gonna close off the username, and then when it's looking to ask for the password, you can assume there's a very similar um, query on the back end to opening the bracket, and then it's gonna look for that password as well. So what we'll do is we'll use this pound sign to comment out the, um, the query for the password entirely. So maybe we'll have the logic, I'm unsure if this is gonna work or not, um, but maybe we'll have the logic to comment out the password field altogether. Um, there might be an injection in this remember me, I'm not super sure. So let's go ahead and try this. We'll log in, and it looks like you do need something for the password just on the front end. So I'm just going to put test in, um, and then we'll log in. Oh, all okay. right. So <laughs> it looks like it works. Um, so the username was admin, um, and all we had to do was close off that username uh, and then use the pound sign to comment out the rest of the password field. Uh, you can't leave the password field blank, uh, but once you put something in there, it doesn't matter what you put in because it's going to get commented out anyways. Um, so all we needed to do was have the logic check for the password and or check for the username, make sure that username exists. So it looks like we got in here. This is going to be our flag. We will copy this. Oops. <laughs> we'll copy that, head back over, and we will do our flag format, paste that in there, and then we will submit this. All right, and it looks like we pwned this machine. All right, join back again tomorrow, guys, and we will go through the next machine in tier one of the start starting point. Thanks.